Hello, within this uh, part uh, we'll create a simple template for Nucleo L476 RG board using stm 32 cube IDE. So I'm starting with stm 32 cube IDE. This is version 1.4.2. Uh, I've got a dedicated folder created uh, for this purpose. So I would use uh, this one. I start the project. And we'll start a new STM32 uh, project. So I'm starting from this button. And now we can select uh, our microcontroller. Uh, I will select the microcontroller instead of the board just to have full visibility of the pins which we'll use. Uh, so I would start with a part selector. Uh, it's enough to put a part of the name. So in our, ca our case, it will be L4. 76RG. Okay, this is this one. I press next. And then the project name. I will try to use the same like in your materials, but uh, it may differ. It doesn't matter in this case. Uh, so I would name it uh, Nucleo L476RG underscore template. Okay, it's enough to put uh, finish. Uh, there is a warning that uh, we will see a different perspective. Uh, perspective means the set of windows which are displayed within the application. Mm, we've got three types of them within stm 32 cube IDE, uh, so-called device configuration tool perspective, which is in fact a view of stm 32 cube MX, which allows us to configure peripherals of the microcontroller. Then there is a CC++ perspective, which allows us to uh, modify the code. And there is a debug perspective, which is used during a debug sessions. Uh, so I will just click yes, that I'm aware that it will be changed. And after a while, we should see the pinout of our microcontroller. we we'll just select it. Okay, so this is our STM32L476RG. We can rotate it. You can see these uh, those two buttons. This is quite small package. It's 64 pins, so it's quite easy to find anything there. But in case you would like to find a particular pin, you can use this search uh, field, which is quite uh, convenient. We will use it to just to demonstrate to find um, a pin where we have uh, green LED connected. So this is pin PA5. So I will just select PA5 and my pin is highlighted over here. I click on a left button on mouse and select GPIO output because we would like to use this pin as output as it is connected uh, to green LED. I can put uh, some label over this pin. So I click right button on mouse and I select enter use label and I would name it LED underscore green. Okay. Those labels are stored later on within main.c files. Uh, so in case you, you change a hardware platform, you can still operate on the same labels just uh, by changing, let's say, the header file. Next point uh, I would add here is uh, the button. It is connected on Nucleo board to pin PC13. So again, I can search over here. This is uh, this pin. I click on left button on mouse, select the last option. This, this is GPIO XT13, which means that uh, we would like to use this pin as an external interrupt. And uh, like before, on uh, PA5, uh, we will uh, assign a label to this pin. So I click on right button on mouse and I put it, put here blue button. Okay, so those are, let's see, two pins. Uh, our basic user interface. Uh, next step which we will do, uh, it will be the selection of the debug pins, just to be sure that those pins are selected and are not overwritten by other functions. So I go to system core sys and within debug uh, I select trace asynchronous serial wire. So this is uh, this will select three lines of the within debug interface, not only as uh, W CLK and SWIO, but as well as WO. 
uh, this SWO is used uh, for a single uh, line trace, which is part of uh, instrumentation trace macro cell within Cortex M4. And we will use it to display some comments, some data from the microcontroller into one of the consoles within uh, ST inverted IDE. Okay, so we selected the debug interface. The next point uh, in this part uh, would be selection of the time base source. Time base source is um, in fact uh, the timer which would be dedicated to the HAL library so hardware abstraction layer library which is responsible for all the timeouts and the delays which would be used within the code so i cannot select here i cannot select here the sysdic because sysdic would be used for freer ties so we need to change it to something else uh, we'll select the timer 6 timer 7 are the best candidates as those do not have any input nor output channels so it will be not a big loss for us I will describe this necessity of uh, selection of different timer than freer used by the freer toys uh, within next parts of this session, especially in within the last one, uh, one of the last ones, uh, troubleshootings and uh, possible issues. Okay, so within this uh, system and uh, system peripherals, uh, we have selected all. Uh, next point uh, which we need to do is uh, to finish our configuration of uh, GPIOs. So I go to the GPIO over here, I can make it bigger and I can see that PI5, uh, its output uh, it's by default is low, which is good because we are controlling this LED by high level. Um, and uh, we need to reconfigure this PC13, so our line where we've got connected the button. So by default it is uh, configured as external interrupt mode with rising edge trigger detection. Uh, we can keep it like this uh, without pull up nor pull down. It is okay for us because uh, this pin has a, a, an external pull up and uh, the button connected as well. So we can select uh, as well falling detection which would be much more natural in this case. So we can keep it as well uh, rising edge. You can see here that uh, instead of interrupt modes, uh, we can see as well the event mode. Event mode, uh, event from interrupt, uh, it's, uh, the, the difference is that uh, event is only waking up the device from low power mode without a uh, code execution, which is assigned to the source of this event, while interrupt is waking up the device from low power mode and uh, it is triggering an interrupt assigned to the source of this wake up, wake up source. So in our case, we need really an interrupt just to use uh, some, to, to put some piece of code uh, within this uh, interrupt which would be used later on. Okay, so I keep it uh, like this. Another very important point is to enable this uh, and configure this uh, interrupt uh, within our uh, interrupt controller configuration. So this is NVIC section. We can go it from here or uh, with an uh, NVIC button in a system view. So by default, uh, uh, this interrupt is disabled, so I need to enable it and I can configure its preemption and sub priority. At the moment it's both are zeros, so the highest possible ones, because we should remember that in Cortex is a reverse meaning of the, of the interrupt level, so the lower number we've got, the higher priority uh, we will have. So at the moment we keep it like this. Now we will come back to this point after enabling the free ties. Okay, so from the hardware point of view, all the peripherals in our template are ready. We are not configuring any clocking system. We will just keep the clock configuration in default setting uh, like this. Uh, so it will be clocked from MSI, multi-speed internal RC, 4 MHz without any PLL. So we will work on 4 MHz. We will not touch this. Another point we need to do is to enable our freer ties. To do this, I go to middleware, I select FreeRTOS, and uh, from this uh, FreeRTOS, I can select uh, one of two options. Uh, I can, of course, disable it. I can select CMC's version 1 and CMC's version 2. 
Over this training wall you'll see MC's version 2 as it is much more rich in terms of the of the features of the possibilities and it's much more closer to native Fourier uh, API and its uh, uh, capabilities and its features. So I select CMC's uh, v2 and after this uh, I can see that uh, I can configure quite a lot with an freer ties using let's say those uh, those tabs. Config parameters and include parameters tabs are used to store the configuration of uh, freer ties. Uh, those uh, settings will be stored later on uh, with an freer ties config.h file. Uh, then the rest, uh, task and queues, timers, semaphores, mutexes, uh, advanced settings and user constants. Those are related to particular components of the operating system which we will use a bit later on. The last tab I would like to mention here is uh, this freer task heap usage which is very helpful uh, in terms of estimation of uh, the memory we would use, RAM memory we would use, uh, we would need to uh, work with our operating system. What it is doing, it is um, estimating the heap size of, uh, of our operating system which would be needed based on the components we just selected. Uh, by default, uh, if we will not uh, select anything, within this configuration we've got a selection of one single task, it is called default task, with stack size 128 words. It is important is that stack size for the task is given in words. Uh, so if we go to again to free or task heap usage, we can see that total amount for tasks is 632 bytes. So it's a bit more than this um, this 128 words. This is due to the fact that task say is using in fact two memory areas. The first one is so called stack which is uh, used to keep temporary variables used by the particular task during its execution and the second one is so-called task control block uh, which contains uh, the configuration settings and connection with other components which are used within the task. Uh, so during task creation, those two areas are uh, automatically created as well, allocated, and this is why we can see this bigger amount of memory usage. Okay, we will not uh, do anything uh, within this uh, configuration, we will keep all default settings, then in our code processing we will just play with this default task, in fact putting some code into this start default task. Uh, function body. What I would like to focus on right now is to have a brief look on the configuration parameters in terms of interrupts. If we go to config parameters and uh, with an interrupt nesting behavior configuration section, we can see two fields, two uh, defines. The first one, library lowest interrupt priority, it is set to 15, which is the lowest uh, possible priority within Cortex M3, M4, M7 devices. And uh, this interrupt uh, level would be assigned to interrupts which are used by the kernel to switch the context. Those interrupts are uh, pent SV and cystic. So those two components are fully described in the next uh, part of this training, especially in a context switch. Next uh, define is library max syscall interrupt priority, which is set to five. So this is the maximum level of the priority of the interrupts, uh, which could uh, execute, execute uh, operating system functions. It is not definitely not good to call the interrupts, the, the operating system functions with, within interrupts with higher priority than this. Higher means lower in numbers. So what we need to do now, we will change our external interrupt priority uh, to some number from 5 to 15 in order to use this interrupt later on to call our operating system functions. I will describe this uh, terminology more in details and uh, terminology and all the risks uh, which are connected to uh, different different configuration later on within uh, next sections of uh, this training and I would uh, summarize it as well with a um, troubleshooting uh, part which is close to the end of this of this training. Okay, uh, so let's come back to interrupt controller and reconfigure our external interrupt for the in different uh, priority level. 
To do this, I go to System View, I go to NVIC, and as you can see, once I selected this NVIC, I can see this uh, warning. So it is what we just described. Let me make it bigger. This is our interrupt, external interrupt. So preemption, priority, sub priority. We can see that uh, in fact three interrupts has been selected by FreeRTOS. The third one is uh, SWI instruction. And so this is a system service call. It is used only to start the interrupt, uh, the operating system. Then it is not used anymore. Uh, pendable uh, request for system service. This interrupt is used really always to switch the context from one interrupt to the other. And system timer assistic is used to give the time slices uh, for different uh, tasks. Uh, okay, this is our interrupt. It has preemption priority zero. So we will set it to something between five and 15. I would select five. Uh, so in this case, uh, it will be very safe uh, to execute any operating system function from this interrupt. Uh, this is due to the fact that with an operating system, most of the operations are done in so-called critical sections. Critical sections done uh, with an uh, operating system with an free ties are blocking the interrupts uh, from this level five, so this max syscall which we described a bit uh, before. So from five to fifteen in this particular configuration, all interrupts so from four to zero, so higher interrupt uh, um, priority, uh, higher, higher priority interrupts. They will be not blocked by these those critical sections. So if we could call any operating system function from the interrupt which has um, higher priority, it could cause uh, system crash uh, due to the unexpected change of the of its configuration. Okay, so at the moment our external interrupt is configured properly, got configured everything we can generate the project. So I go to project manager. There is nothing uh, nothing else to be filled here. I can generate the project by this gear uh, icon. So device configuration tool code generation or from project and generate code. After next modifications, I can just press Ctrl S and the project will be updated uh, automatically. So I generate the code. Uh, there is another warning that uh, there would be a change of um, the perspective into C, C++. So it would allow us to perform some code uh, modifications. So I press OK, I press Yes. OK, and after a while we can see our new project. So by default uh, there is an open of main.c file, so main file which contains most of the functions and it is, let's say, a place of our code. On the left side, we can see the project explorer. Mm, so this is name of our project. Then with the, the main folder for us is this core, which contains uh, the main sources which we will work on. We then include, so we've got some uh, header files uh, with the configuration. The main ones are freeRTOS config.h file, which contains the configuration of freeRTOS, and main.h file, which contains, for example, the assignment of the labels which is used. Then within sources, the main file for us is of course main.c file. Uh, we will work as well in the next uh, section, especially within advanced topics uh, with this freeRTOS.c file. The rest of them we will not touch. Uh, we can just briefly have a look on them. Interesting is this one, so hal underscore time base underscore time team.c uh, file, which contains the functions for a time base used for hal library. So we will see inside uh, the functions like HAL underscore init tick, then suspend tick and resume tick. Please have a look that everything is oper uh, operating on uh, timer uh, six. Uh, coming back to our explorer again, within drivers, we will find uh, CMCs and uh, STM32L4 HAL library. Within middlewares, we will find uh, FreeRTOS sources. So within sources, we can see the native uh, FreeRTOS sources, uh, which are C routine, not used in our case, event groups, lists, queue, stream buffer, tasks, and timers. Uh, so those are native for FreeRTOS and uh, platform agnostic. Then to connect it to our hardware, we need some porting files. Those are 
uh, stored within this portable location and here we've got two folders GCC and memory management. Within GCC and uh, particular Cortex-M4 uh, with floating point unit we've got two files port.c and port macro.h. Those two functions contains implementation of uh, Cystic and pent SV and uh, single uh, and um, system call interrupt uh, handlers which are called uh, on uh, context switch and start of the operating system. Those are really uh, the lowest possible level to switch the context within operating system. Part of this uh, is written in assembly language. We can just briefly have a look. So please have a look this uh, system call handler. It's uh, written really in assembly language like uh, start first task then cystic uh, band sv so this is the switching the context so you can see complete code how to switch the context we will focus on this uh, in um, uh, next uh, parts especially within booting uh, and context switch section of this session uh, within memory management subfolder within the explorer we can find uh, a file which is called heap underscore four dot c this is one of the five possible, let's say, heap files, let me say this way. This file contains uh, the memory allocation and release uh, functions, which are used to allocate the memory for operating system components. So we can select one of uh, five models. We will describe this within part uh, concerning memory allocation schemes. Those are, let's say, the files which we will use within our project. If we come back to main.c file, we can see here quite a lot user code components, user code uh, begin, user code end. Those uh, parts are dedicated to the user, to the, the embedded software engineer, to locate private code. If we locate the code within those uh, parts, uh, we will be sure, we can be sure that after code regeneration, so we will be our code would be would be protected. If we go uh, for a bit below, we can see that our one task is defined within the private variables and it's called default task. It has its own handler uh, with this type, let's say the, the name, priority and stack size. Please have a look that it's multiplication by four. This is due to the fact that we are defining the stack of the task uh, in words. Then within main function, uh, we've got uh, the hardware configuration. So this is HAL init system clock config and peripheral initialization. If you are interested in more details, uh, you can refer to on, uh, of our other trainings like uh, STM32Cube IDE basics or uh, some sessions about STM32Cube IDE and HAL libraries. After this, uh, we've got initialization of the kernel, uh, which is in fact allocation of its uh, heap memory. And after this, uh, there is a part to create operating system components. So we are starting with, um, let's say, the, our only task. It's done by this function new. And after this, uh, we are starting the scheduler. So we should never land within debug session below this line 130 on this function. Uh, if we land here, it means that we've got some issues with uh, kernel itself, uh, most probably with, um, let's say, the heap area of the operating system, and uh, it is really a critical point. We need to review the code and to make uh, some corrections. Once we start it, the code is really executed within particular tasks, and each task has its uh, own, uh, say, function body, which is executed during its time. Uh, so in our case, we've got uh, only two tasks. The one is start default task, and the second one is so-called idle task. Idle task is a so-called uh, default task, which is always present uh, when the operating system is starting. And this task is executed if no other task is ready to, for execution. This uh, idle task uh, has some very important roles with an operating system, and uh, most important one is uh, releasing the memory when we delete some operating system components. So it is cleaning the memory allocation after task will do the job. We will uh, not discuss it now in details. Uh, it will be discussed a bit later on. So let's uh, put some code within this start default task uh, just to see whether it is working. To do this, uh, I just uh, try to 
toggle LED. So using HAL library, it will be HAL underscore GPIO underscore. I can press control space and look for a function which I can use. There is a toggle pin. Looks good. And here I can see that I need two arguments, the port and the pin. As we are using labels, I would try with the label name. So it was LED. I can press again control space and I can see there is something with the port. So this is my first argument. And for the second argument, I will do the same. So LED underscore control space and I can see LED green pin. OK, so this function should toggle LED and uh, I need uh, to slow it down somehow. And please have a look that this task is um, built with the endless loop inside. We can treat it as a mini while one loop main.c file. So if I would not use any delay afterwards, it will be executed constantly. As if this is the only task active, a part of idle, but idle will not be run if uh, the higher priority task, which is this one, would be present and active. Uh, so how to slow it down? Uh, I can use either HAL delay, uh, like uh, in a standard HAL library code, but in this case this task would be blocked, will block, let's say, the time uh, of the of the operating system. It is not, a, let's say, the, the, the best best choice. It's better to use OS delay. OS delay is sending my start the default task to so-called blocked state, and is giving the space to other tasks. In our case, it will be idle task. And after the specified the delay, the task is coming back to ready state and can be selected once again by the scheduler for execution. Uh, so I would use it uh, with 500. So it will be sent to blocked state for uh, half a second. Once done it, I can try to build the code. So using this hammer. OK, there was no errors, no warnings. And uh, the next step would be to uh, start debug session. So first I will connect uh, my Nucleo board to PC. I can see that my LED uh, close to a USB connector of ST-Link is not uh, blinking, which means that the driver is properly installed and I should not have no problems with work on ST-Link, which is located on the board. The second uh, Red LED is uh, informing us about the power supply connection to the target microcontroller. And uh, now we are ready to start the debug session. So I click uh, on this con on this bug icon. First, uh, okay, so it's trying to run a debug session. Again, we can see this uh, warning that um, it will switch the debug perspective. And so again, we will uh, we can see the different um, view Windows configuration within our ST forty two Cube IDE, which would be much more convenient uh, to perform a debug operations. So I uh, click that I'm aware of it. Uh, I ask to remember my decision. And so switch. Okay, take some time. Uh, so I can see right now a bit different view. Uh, so instead of Project Explorer, I can see some objects which are used by our debugger. Uh, central point is still our main.c file. On the right side, I can see some set of tabs uh, which are related to the views uh, which can be used uh, within a debug session. So variables, breakpoints, expressions, uh, registers. Uh, so ge registers in general are uh, are related to the, let's say the registers of the core itself while uh, the peripheral registers are stored within this SFR uh, special function registers. Uh, we have as well the live view which we will use a bit uh, later on. I will not focus now on those uh, components, we'll just try to run the application. Uh, for this uh, we've got a bit different uh, toolbar uh, on top and the uh, main uh, buttons are those uh, so display uh, pause button is resume so once i click it um, i should see uh, my led uh, blinking uh, what you can see right now on the screen uh, if i press this pause button it means that uh, my application will be paused so you can see that uh, my code is uh, paused as well and uh, 
uh, if I press this stop, uh, it would terminate uh, the debug session. So in case I would like to run it, I just play, press pre uh, play, so resume. And if I press pause, uh, I would be uh, paused again. Uh, so if I terminate uh, the debug session, uh, I would come back to my C++ uh, perspective, so I can continue the uh, code, uh, code execution. Our next point uh, will be a preparation of a uh, bit more complex user interface, uh, which we will use in the next parts, next labs uh, within the free RTOS uh, training. Uh, so we will use uh, ITM interface, so instrumentation trace, trace macro cell, to send some data from the tasks and uh, from the interrupts and display them on the internal console, a single wire viewer console, which is available within stm 32 cube IDE. And within this part, uh, I will demonstrate to you how to use it, how to configure it, to use it as an additional debug interface, which can be used on a development phase. So we'll start with uh, declaration of a new function. So we'll select this user code begin project function, uh, private function uh, prototypes. And uh, I would uh, declare here um, our task action function. So it will be task underscore action. And it will have only one argument. Okay. And then in my code, I would define this function so it's a user code begin for is the start of my function okay and here i would just send to sign signs uh, using itm interface so uh, the function is the following itm send and send char and uh, i would send uh, here message and uh, just to have, uh, let's say, everything in one line, I would do the same, but uh, this time I would use the, let's say, the sign of the next line. Okay, so this would be our task action code. And instead of our LED blinking, so even our start default task, mm, we will use this task action. So I would remove this one and I would use task action and I would send uh, one. Okay. So after this, I would compile the code. Start the, and before I will start the debug session, I will check whether uh, our serial wire viewer is enabled. So I need to go to the configuration of the debug. So I press on this uh, small arrow, down arrow here, and go debug configurations. Within the debugger tab, I'm checking whether there is um, a link, so it's okay. Enable serial wire viewer. This is our uh, setting. We'll keep uh, the rest. Uh, the important point is here, to have exactly the same uh, core clock. It is four megahertz in our case. So we've got everything correctly set, I can start the debug session. So let's wait for a while. Okay, and now I need to run the serial wire viewer view and how to do it. If we do not know where to find it, it's good to have this quick access and I will just select single, single wire viewer. And what is interesting for us is uh, this uh, ITM console. I select this. Then we need to configure it. So I click on it and I can select port zero over here. Please have a look that we can use as well some uh, data trace. Uh, we've got four comparators here. We can specify the variable or its address and uh, trace its value graphical way. So it's very, very convenient. I will not use it uh, in this exercise. So I just press OK. We've got port 0 SW VITM data console. And now uh, what we need to do, uh, we need to uh, start the trace. And let's try and start in our code. So I press resume. And we can see that uh, we've got this one sent over ITM interface to our 
SWV uh, ITM data console. We will use this mechanism, this uh, task action code, task action function to communicate uh, our tasks with us uh, via this console. Uh, we can send, um, we can ask, call this function from interrupts as well. So it will be great help for us to check in on which point we are within our application. So at the moment I will switch off the code and uh, just um, one more message once you prepare the template of application you can export it for further use using file export and now you go to general archive next you select this template it's good to select this resolve and export linked resources to be sure that all of the files uh, are stored as well as well and uh, we just specified uh, I can put it template template file I can locate it somehow uh, I put uh, on a desktop then template zip and save and then if you would like to reuse it you can always uh, import the archived project via file import and use it uh, for further processing and uh, in the rest of the exercises we will do within this uh, free artist training we will reuse this kind of the template so uh, sending the data using task action and uh, just modifying some settings of the operating system adding some components removing some components but just not to waste the time uh, on the new uh, let's say project generation you can use one template and modify it so that's it for this uh, for this part now we can move forward to move in free artos training thank you for watching this part